This is E3D's newest release. It's the Revo Roto, and it is a tiny little extruder hot end combo for the Revo ecosystem. My hands are rather small, so they're a bad reference. So let me just bring this guy in. This is an E3D V4 hot end, uh, their first hot end that they made. And this is just the hot end, no extruder. And it is amazing how close they are in size. And remember, this is a full extruder included. Reference to the Himera. Yeah, that's about half the volume. They are smaller in every size with the new Revo Roto generation. This is a really well executed, tiny, compact, lightweight design, but they did have to make some concessions to get there. Compared to the Himera, the motor size has been shrunk down to maybe at most a third, but E3D still claim that the extruder part of this is not going to be the limiting factor when it comes to how much filament you can push. It is always going to be the hot end that tops out first. So at any speed that the hot end can still reliably melt filament, the extruder part should be able to keep up. So that is one of the things we're gonna test today, right after a message from today's sponsor. Behind me, we've got part of my 30 kilowatt solar system that I planned myself. And while that was already quite a lot of work, once you have to plan out larger solar farms or industrial scale roof mount installs, the hand waving I did for the couple panels here just isn't gonna cut it. PV Case takes in location and terrain information and automatically creates optimized layouts, 3D cabling and bombs for your next large scale ground or CNI roof mount solar project. And it's all running inside AutoCAD for that familiar engineering touch. Check out PV Case at the link below. All right, FedEx, what did you bring us today? That's a tough bag. Ah, look at you, FedEx, bring me a Roto Revo. They've also shipped me a high flow Revo hot side, which is nice of them. Uh, that includes a 0.6 millimeter high flow nozzle and a high power heater cartridge, but we're gonna stick with the standard power heater for this one. And this is the censored version. So it's the same Revo Roto, but with a whole bunch of sensors tacked onto it that you can use to measure stuff about your extruder and pot in. So you do get a Bowden adapter straight out of the box, cables, and that is the filament sensor that is included, screws, a fan, more cables, more cables, more cables. That's the thermistor for the heatsink. And then the smallest box of them all, this is 001? Is this like the first one they made? Oh wow. That looked a whole lot bigger in the pictures. So this aluminum front plate looks sort of interesting because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. There's this webbing here, there's more webbing here, then there's something that looks like a hot end heatsink, and that's actually where your Revo nozzle mounts. So if we take this, that's where that goes. Of course, you put the, the heater block on. But it's an interesting finish because it's sort of glossy, it's sort of polished, but you can still see the original texture from the 3D print because obviously this part is 3D printed from aluminum. And up here, I don't know, this is gonna be super hard to see, but it even looks like there is some, some remainder of support material on that very edge. So that's aluminum, that's plastic, and then this back here is the motor. So for size, let me just, let me just bring out a couple reference products uh, just to show you how tiny this thing really is. So there is our Roto Revo. And you know, direct comparison, that is the predecessor, that's the Himera. And you know, putting these on top of each other, just the motor from Himera is almost the same size as the entire Roto Revo. So that's that's pretty cool. Of course, both of these do still need a fan. So that's the fan, um, the hot and cooling fan essentially from uh, the Himera. And then this is the teeny tiny fan that goes on the Roto Revo. So, so that is also a lot smaller. This is the Bontech LGX that has a slice engineering hot end built into it. Um, it's more cuboid. And it is, it is more compact in a couple dimensions than a Hemera, but it's not, it's, it's nowhere close to being as compact as the Roto Revo. Um, the LGX Ace, which is just a, the same thing in a different orientation, also still a lot bigger. I mean, if you just look at the length, that is like 20% longer. And also size-wise, this is still a compact pancake NEMA 17. And this is a NEMA 14 motor. And then for a complete tool head, we've got the Micro Swiss NG that is also their compact offering more or less. Um, of course that has the tool head or the, the mounting options for an Ender 3 on there right now. So, you know, 
So yeah, any way you shuffle it, the E3D Roto Revo definitely is the most compact one. And just, just one last comparison, sort of. Um, we've got the, the carbon fiber Voron uh, afterburner one. If I put that on here, like that, that straight up fits in there. That is definitely impressively small. But there are actually a couple compromises that E3D had to make to get down to this size. First of all, the motor size. This is now a NEMA 14, as I just said. And if you compare it to the Himera, it is like one quarter of the volume, one quarter of the mass of this thing. So this has a lot less torque than all of these other extruders. Um, but E3D are still saying it's gonna be enough. It's gonna be good enough to push you know, any hot end that you might attach to this thing, uh, it's gonna push that hot end to its limit to where, you know, you're gonna cold extrude and the hot end is not gonna be able to uh, heat the filament up as quickly as this thing can push it. To get down the weight, they also made the center piece, this entire carrying piece out of plastic. Um, and these are actually your mounting points. So you have the same pattern on either side. You can actually mount this either way and it doesn't matter if these are blocked up with other extruders if you have multiple. And, you know, you can either tap into these parts from this side or you can screw through from the other side and then this is your your idler lever actually so that's that's the filament release right there and you just heard that click because that actually stays in place and to release it to tension the filament against the gears you just release it right there with a little flexural hinge i don't know if that's going to last like if you have this close and you yank on it well, actually it, it just it comes open so that may be a weak point over time but it could last, um, but there is no more adjustment as far as filament tension goes, which honestly I am fine with because it, you know, I rarely adjust filament tensions. What the manufacturer presets usually is just perfect and it just removes one error that the user could make. Uh, but you know, some people might complain about this, but if you do just get a different extruder, this is more of a as light and compact as possible one, not one that has like all the torque and all the features and stuff, even though it is pretty packed out when it comes to like, smart features. Let me try and crack this thing open and we can take a closer look at the insides. Well, that was easy. Yeah. So this gearing that you're seeing here is not actually all of the gearing in here. So this is a roughly three to one, I would assume, um, gearing from this side to the drive gears. So this gear is attached to the drive gears directly and it is still a dual drive. So you have one half of the driving mechanism on this side and the other half is on the idler just getting pushed against the filament. So that is the gearing right there. But there is a second stage of gearing hidden in this plastic box, which is a planetary gearbox. And that all adds up to a gearing ratio of about 11 to one, which means in combination with the 0 0.9 degree motor, you're getting a hell of a lot of resolution, but also this motor is gonna be spinning fairly fast to push out filament, which I guess will make up for its rather small size and consequently, it's low torque. Also, if you look at all the parts in this front end, I guess, of the extruder, there are no ball bearings in here. So this thing just rides in a, in a cutout, the idle lever right there. Then these are all on bushings. But down here, you can see one of the first features that comes into play with the censored version, so the, the premium version of the Roto Revo. And that is a slot for a heatsink thermistor, um, where the printer actually has an idea of whether the fans are working or you're printing at an at a ambient temperature that is too high and you may get jamming up here. So you can just measure that. Feature number two from the sensor package is you get a fan with a tack output. That's nothing too special. Again, it's just a, an extra layer of verification whether the fan's working. And you also get this little Bontex style 3D printed um, filament presence sensor essentially. So this is not a, a, a tracker that monitors whether your filament is still moving. It's just a regular filament switch, but it integrates neatly up here, I guess. Yeah, that, that looks like where it's going. And it just slots onto your Revo Roto. It's actually just this one screw to disassemble it and reassemble it. And then everything just falls apart. So if there's anything ever going wrong with the gearing and stuff, yeah, it's super easy to clean out. So of course, just like the classic Himera, um, it has the Revo or the, the Himera mount in the bottom, which means you can really only use E3D's Revo nozzles with the hot end. But you know, if you want to, you can use uh, a Himera heatsink and you can still attach V6 compatible blocks and nozzles to this. So lastly, looks wise, I mean, it is super cute and tiny and stuff, especially, you know, compared to these huge extruders in comparison. Uh, 
but this this aluminum piece, I don't know, I've, I've not quite gotten used to the look of it. It, it looks sort of like a, a homemade die cast part, especially with all the different patterns and textures and stuff going on. I don't know, you know, you, you put it next to Bontic LGX Ace and this thing just looks like a, you know, like some cyberpunk tank device. And then you've got this wee little boy here. I don't know, it's it's fine. Like, you, you, you don't care about aesthetics typically. It needs to work well. So, what do you say we get to some testing and we actually see how much this thing can push? Wait a minute, why is there an Obix Sidian sticker in here that didn't include... Oh! Oh, it, it is an Obix Sidian. Yeah, I, I did happen to ruin all my other ones in, in the testing I did, so that's nice of them. Say hello to my little friend. You know this guy, this is my extrusion force tester that I've used to test extrusion forces of hot ends in the past. I'm gonna mount a regular Revo with the standard heater and I'm just gonna use uh, 210 degrees with PLA and I'm gonna see how far I can take each of these extruders until either they slip or they skip. So for the Revo Roto, the recommended current is 450 milliamps peak or 318 milliamps RMS. This quite potentially could just burn up if I plug it in like that. So that is something I'm gonna to need to measure and tune before I hook stuff up. I'm gonna set a baseline with the Himera and then we're you know, gonna drill some new holes and mount some different extruders. With this setup, we're getting a useful extrusion rate or extrusion speed of around six or seven millimeters per second. This is what seven did. Uh, you're getting some massive die swell, which sort of indicates that you are extruding too cold or too fast and the hot end is not keeping up. At eight millimeters a second, we are getting skips in the motor and in the gear. So that is definitely past the useful extrusion speed uh, that we're getting here. Which is interesting in the way that it is right in line with what the limits are that I looked up beforehand. So there are limits that you can set in your slice. Those limits are set so that you're extruding at like five millimeters a second with the Voron profiles, with the official Voron 2.4 profiles, and at around six with the profiles that come with the Pusher Mark IV and input shaping. So seeing out that, you know, seven is too much and six still looks decent, that is good results, that that double checks that we are getting sane results in this setup. So next up, figuring out how I'm gonna mount this because like everything is offset, all the mounting holes are different between each of these extruders, but I'll figure something out. Okay, so that's the last extruder mounted. It's the Micro Swiss NG, and I had to mount it sideways, and yeah, it was tricky. But I got it in there, it's solid, and we can test this one out. It's the last one we're gonna do, and then we can take a look at some results. Okay, so that was over 100,000 data points collected. Testing with a real hot end and not just stalling the extruder against a solid stop and then measuring the max force for that, that meant I was really just measuring the flow characteristics of the Revo hot end again and again and again with every extruder. But I could use that flow curve and crank up the speed on the extruder until it just couldn't provide the push force needed anymore. I did three runs with each of the extruders and yeah, we've got a whole bunch of data to dig through. With a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, all the extruders I tested were basically equal. Um, they all pushed no problem up to six millimeters a second. Again, five or six is where print profiles commonly max out. And then at seven or eight, the force required just really started spiking up, which means the hot end just was not melting enough filament anymore. 
At that point, it makes no sense trying to push any harder because you're just trying to squeeze out more cold filament. Some extruders started skipping either the uh, drive gears or the motor um, at seven. Some barely managed to get to eight. Again, it really doesn't matter if it's seven or eight, it's just noise pushing cold filament at that point. And six millimeters a second or about 15 cubic millimeters per second is really all that is standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle can melt. Considering how short the melt zone actually is, that's actually pretty impressive. Um, it means that the filament only spends roughly three seconds in the melt zone uh, until it is fully heated. So this is great news, right? Uh, E3D claimed the Rotoriva would keep up in the regions where it actually matters, and it does. Well, there's one more thing. While you weren't looking, I also tested with a 0.6mm high flow nozzle, which has a little more resistance down low compared to a standard 0.6, but does a much better job at higher flow rates. And this is where the Revo Roto just completely tapped out. Anything past 7mm per second, it would just stall. And with the 0.6 high flow nozzle, the maximum I ever saw with the Revo Roto was just 1.9 kilograms of average pushing force. The LGX made it to twice that with 14 millimeters per second at 5.1 kilograms. The NG to 17 millimeters at 6.2 kilograms and the Himera made it basically all the way through the test and only barely started skipping at 20 millimeters per second while putting an impressive 8.9 kilograms on the filament. That was all with the manufacturer recommended motor currents and a Trinamic 2208 driver. The 0.6mm high flow nozzle doesn't have that same spike in force as the standard 0.4. So I would assume it actually does a better job melting the filament at those higher speeds, meaning it's actually more usable at those flow rates. But since the Revo Roto stops working at basically the same flow rate with a 0.6mm high flow, as with a standard 0.4, all the while, you know, Himera pushing out almost three times as fast at three times the force, I would strongly disagree with the claim that the Revo Roto is good enough for all compatible hot ends. The motor is just too small. The power delivered from a motor is torque multiplied by RPM. So assuming the power your motor can sustain is limited, as RPM rises, the available torque will drop. In these tests, we're requiring the extruder motor to deliver more torque while it also has to spin faster as we crank up the feed rate. Um, so it's no surprise that eventually we hit a brick wall. The Revo Roto is geared down super far. It's a roughly 2,700 steps per millimeter extruder, while all the others basically are at about 400. So they really geared down the tiny little motor a lot so that it delivers its maximum power at lower speeds, which honestly are the speeds you're going to most likely use, so at around five millimeters per second of filament pushed through the hot end. But anything past that, it just drops off a cliff. The other extruders have gearing that puts the motor at a much higher optimal speed, where they only start delivering the most power at higher than normal print speeds, but because they are physically larger and more powerful motors, they still have enough torque down low to work flawlessly at the speeds where the Revo Roto is already starting to creep up to its limits. Again, this is why testing with a real hot end is so important here. RPM have a huge impact and just testing at zero speed tells you absolutely nothing. So is the Revo Roto for you? Well, if you plan to use it with a 0.4 nozzle, drop it onto a Corex Y and get the smallest and lightest setup possible, this absolutely is a fantastic choice. With the Revo hot and integrated, it makes for a super compact and lightweight package. Again, that's, that's the V4 against it. It is super, super tiny. But it's not a full replacement for Himera, uh, or even able to compete with any other extruder in its price segment when it comes to simply how hard it can drive filament, because it's not built for that. Uh, it's a small, light, well thought out extruder built for one task and one task only, and it does that one task really well. If you want to grab one, it has just become available in shops. Uh, links are below. This was super interesting to test. If you want to support more tests like this, like, support, share the video to let the algorithm know that you liked it. Or if you really want to, you can also support my work through YouTube memberships or Patreon. Thanks for watching. 
keep on making and I'll see you in the next one.